Hi everyone, my name is Fredrik Wermling. I have a research group at the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, Sweden. And in this video, I will uh, show you some updates we recently made to the software, as well as give you some background uh, to experiments that you could do, and also give an example how we work with the software. Let's get started. And so Greenlist, it was uh, pushed online somewhere in December 2016. And now, in the end of uh, February 2017, we made uh, several updates to the software. The ones that are most obvious for users is the inclusion of more reference libraries. So uh, originally, it was only the Gecko version 2 that you could use as a source for, for guide RNAs. Um, but now we included several more um, from uh, different prominent uh, labs. And we are very happy and immensely grateful for these these um, researchers that they helped us with this and approved that we use their their, um, their libraries. Um, briefly, of course, uh, CRISPR-Cas9 is something that you would use to modify genes, uh, typically, and it's um, a two-component system in general, one being a guide RNA, looking like this, another one being a Cas9. Uh, which is a, a nuclease which can cut DNA. And of course, there's, as you know, there's several versions of this now. Um, and um, together, these will could then be used to cut the DNA in the cell, for example, here. And the specificity is then uh, mediated by the guide RNA. So this part here that would bind to the um, genetic region. And this, this, what, what Greenlist does, the software does, is to design these or suggest which sequences you would use if you want to target a particular gene. And we often use um, the software for designing custom CRISPR screens, which basically mean that we would have a set of genes that we want to target with the screen. And then we want to input them into the software, and the software will then suggest a long list of these to order. This would be cloning to vectors, we would make lentiviruses, infect the cell population uh, with uh, titrated so only one virus gets into each cell. So we will generate a genetic heterogeneous population doing that. And then we would identify cells that are behaving differently. And then in the, in the assay that we're studying, and then we will uh, separate them and sequence them and see which genes were targeted making these cells behaving differently. So what could what type of different genes could you target? So you could consider differential expressed genes, and this is what we have predominantly done in the past. Um, going for genes that are up or down regulated when some, when when the cell is behaving in a particular way. This could of course be experiments you do, but there's so much of this data online now. Um, so I think that's um, yeah, there's a lot, a lot of things to do there. You could be interested in a particular pathway, and we're interested, for example, in citrullination process. There's a Go term for that, so you can extract those genes based using Go terms. Um, you could be interested in particular sets, a, a gene families, so all kinases, for example. Um, and you could also um, have a set of genes that you want to uh, make a screen against that's coming uh, as a secondary screen that comes from, from a larger screen that you already did. And as you probably know, uh, open this here. Um, there are several of these full genomic libraries, um, and some of them are, or several of them are available to Agin, which you know is a non-profit plasmid repository, which is, is is great for 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 plasmids. So here you can see that there are actually several several of these libraries targeting um, um, most of the genes in the genome. Um, so that's some of the reasons why you want to make uh, a screen targeting a subset of, 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 um, of genes. I don't know. Um, so now I'll show you an example of that then. So I'm going to go here, uh, go to how to use here, which is a file I suggest that you read if you want to use this software or if you're using it, it could be helpful. Uh, here are some example web pages we have used to identify interesting sets of genes in the past. I want to particularly go to this um, web page, the uh, Drug Gene Interaction Database, which is a very fascinating database containing a lot of genes um, that could be interesting as drugs, uh, drug targets. Um, and I'm going to prepare to look at this histone modification. So this is a 
list of, of, of genes then, um, that encodes for proteins that have some kind of histone modifying ability, which of course is something um, biotechnologists is, is interested in. But they, I mean, there's, there's also interesting biology, of course. You know. But as a drug target, they, they, they show to be interesting. So you can download these. You see, get these kind of things that doesn't make any sense. You can copy them. Go to Excel, paste them, and then it start making some more sense. Right. So here is a list of genes. Um, potentially interesting drug targets. Potentially interesting from from biological point of view. And you want to make a screen and see is any of these involved in your in your um, assay that you're working. So we go to green listed, we input them here. Let's use the Doenge and Brunello library, which is a human library. Make from this reference here. Um, let's the input is here. In other videos, I talk more about different options. And the one you, you want to use is would be to add adapter sequence for cloning purposes, so five, five and three prime sequences. Um, this is something I would make an individual video about, but just Briefly, just mention it. So, greenlisted will output a lot of different of these 20 base pair sequences, giving specificity, right? And you want to put them into different type of vectors for for working on and, and or plasmids. And to do that, you need, of course, do some kind of cloning work or do some cloning work. And for that, you need some kind of adapter sequence that could look in different ways. Right? Um, but just showing you what what these adapter sequences would be. But I'm not going to add that now because I. Uh, that's for other videos. So here you see, you see it start counting up here. If, if I just want to mention that if nothing happens here, although it says that you shouldn't press the refresh button, if nothing happened in that status window, press refresh, um, and it, it probably work if you redo it. So that job is completed. It found 314 different uh, of these um, genes that we wanted to target. Three of them were not found. And download a result here in the output user input parameters and you can just see whatever you, what, it, what it was that you asked for which genes you wanted to target which library was used etc so it's a good file to, to keep here I should also mention that they are these are downloaded into at least in my computer to a download folder um, there's a compact output list here just show you which genes there are and how many, many uh, GRNAs for each gene and so the Doenge libraries have four genes, a GNS per gene, but this varies between the different libraries, as you can see. Um, we can also see that there was three of these genes that weren't found. So um, there I would suggest that you take them one by one and Google them and see if there's an alternative name. Or you would, if you take them, you can copy them. And I paste them in here and then I just go to a different library. So let's go to the Gecko version 2. Just reminding you that there is a detail, there's information here if you want to read about these different libraries. See what's what's might be different between them. And then we press run. And that was fast. So what we found here was that there was one of these is still not found, but two of them were found. So you could do like this also, where you take the, the the ones that are not found on the not found list and then go to different libraries and try to find them. Um, that leads up with two different output. These are the main output files. There's a short version and a long version. I'm going to use the long one here because there's a lot of information. You can copy that, go to Excel, paste it. And what you'll see here um, is focusing on the most important Oops. Um, yeah, you'll see that um, you'll see that there is a long list here of suggested guides to use, guide RNAs to use, um, and you'll see that um, there are uh, here is they're given a, a name, each one of course, um, a long name containing stating there's a gRNA, which gene it is, which number of the um, ID number of the guide. There are four different, and also which library to use. This is something I often like keeping because it's you never know when you come back to it. And yeah, this is very informative, but of course, there's also a short name here that 
more easy to work with. And then there is the guide RNA sequence. And if there would have been adapters, if we would have added them, it would have been here. And what basically you do, if you're interested in this library, you would just take this, you would copy it, you would send it to a company that would synthesize this as an oligopool, and then you can work with that. Um, I'll show you an example based on a question I was asked. So how do you do if you want to kind of test these? Go with Paddy2 here, which is a uh, pad, it's a family that we're working on. Um, so that's why I choose it. So let's put ensemble and blast here. Um, and here you can input these uh, guide RNAs and see um, and have it have it see if they, where if it's found in the it's going to human uh, genome. Um, and if you just take them and paste them here, you'll see that this software puts them together into one. So if you want to test them individually, you need to do something. Really make sure that they are separated. Paste them in here. Now you can see there is four of them that's identified. Then you press run. So then you have to wait. So you see they're lining up here, they're queued. Um, and in the meanwhile, while this is occurring, I can just um, go back and show you some some minor things with greenlisted. So one is that when we are when there's information related to greenlisted uh, coming up, it's the best place to find them is through my webpage here that you find here. Um, the other thing is, of course, there are all these clickable things and a demo version videos. You, you only work with how to use and how to cite. So just mentioning that if you, if you're if you're extracting journeys from any of these uh, libraries, I would um, or you should uh, cite the um, the original publication, which will be found on here. And of course, if you find our software useful, we are immensely grateful if you could cite using it too and uh, to get some attention to it. Um, there are other clickable things like here is information about. The, the libraries here in detail information. So here, um, so it's done. You'll see for these four different GNAs, there's um, for three of them there is just one hit, which is the optimal situation. But there's one of them that has two, and you can look at it here. As mentioned, we this was supposed to target pad pad two, and it's perfectly overlapping. So 20 out of 20 bases. But we can also see that this other gene was tar uh, targeted or binding with 17 of these 20, which then, of course, there's a risk of an off target activity. And that's, of course, why you want to use several GNAs to target um, in a screen to target a gene that would uh, target different exons, for example. So, And what you would expect is that if a gene is really involved in phenotype, you would get the same phenotype if you're uh, using different GNAs targeting different. And then finally, I just want to show this because this is it could be interesting. And so, if you if you target, we were talking about pad two here. You can see there is four transcripts described: one major one, one potential protein coding, other one. And if you look at them here, you can see that your the different um, different sequence GRNAs that we were testing. You can see where they're lining up. So you can see at which uh, exon they're binding. And this is, um, you, you can do this with other softwares. Um, I just find this to be very, uh, a very simple way of, of doing it. Um, so here you'll see the exon, and you can see how they kind of will bind to it. All right. So that was what I wanted to talk about today. Um, so I hope this was informative. Um, thank you.